Good morning and welcome to Wesley Church. My name is Cynthia Thomas. I am a certified lay leader for the Susquehanna Conference and I will be your worship leader this morning. I hope that you're doing well and getting back into the routine after the holidays and thank you for joining us today. Pastor Doug and Dee are on a well-deserved vacation and I'm filling in for them today. I'm sorry that you're not able to be here this morning, but it's great to have technology that we can still worship live in different ways. I have one announcement before we begin our service this morning. Uh, on January 17th from 1 to 4 p.m., join us in the multi-purpose room for our Martin Luther Day King, I'm sorry, Martin Luther King Day of Service. We will work to complete service projects which support nonprofit organizations in the area. All adults, youth, and kids are welcome to come and lend a hand, and all are welcome. Let us begin with our call to worship responsively. We gather together in the name of our God, the maker of heaven and earth who calls us away from the customs and attitudes of the world around us and invites us instead into a transforming relationship with him and with one another. Let's worship God together. Our opening prayer, if we could please continue in unison as well. Let us pray. Holy God, as we face another day, we know that we are going to face many challenges to our faith, to our patience, and to our love for others. We are going to have periods of temptations to last, lapse into sin. Come to us now and stay with us all day. Let your spirit encompass your, our mind and let us know your presence. Please. Steer our hands, direct our words, guide our thoughts in everything we think of, also in what we say and do. We resolve to live this day to be a beacon of your glory, the best we can with your help. We commit ourselves to give this day to you in the name of Christ. Be with us and help us. Amen. At this time, I'd like to just do a little children's chat, and hopefully there's some children there in your house that can, this can be shared. I have up on the screen, it's called a friend. And you can see it there. And this friend has a lot of things going on. It says a mouth for advice, ears ready to listen, to, warm, to have a warm smile. A heart for caring, and arms for a hug, of course, chocolate chip cookies for us to share, and hands to hold, our favorite sweater to share, the Bible to read from, and Kleenexes for our tears, and also legs to stand by by you and the feet and walking and talks. I'm sure all of you have a BFF, a best friend forever, I do, and it's really nice to know that we can count on our friends to be with us or to hold our hand for us to listen to them. And sometimes we can give advice, but the best thing is for them, for us to listen to them. As we go through life, we will come across many, many friends. But you know, the best friend that we can have is Jesus. He's a person that never changes. He's there, is always there for us. We can come to him in prayer at any time. And he's always there ready to lean on, for us to lean on him because he wants us to come to him with everything that we do and everything we say, and he will help and guide us and protect us. And the best of all, he loves us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for friends. Whether they be near or far, we know that they are there for us. We can text them or, or be on Facebook with them. But we know, Lord, that you are always beside us, guiding us and giving us the best advice. And we know, Lord, you love us. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
May we bow our heads for our morning prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for being the awesome God that you are. We thank you for your words of truth that brings inspiration and peace into our hearts. As we follow you, inspire us to seek your wisdom to make the best choices in our lives. Father, at the start of each day, help us to recognize you above all else. You are the light that guides our feet, and you are the map that gives us direction. Enlighten the eyes of our heart that we might see you and notice how you're at work in our lives. And may your strength and confidence give us new direction to love you, to serve you, and to make your name known throughout this world. As we go through trials of life, help us to realize that you are with us at all times and in all things, just as you have promised. We know that we are sinners and we ask for forgiveness of those times that we have done wrong to others, whether through our actions or words. We pray for those dealing with forms of sickness and disease. And we ask for you to restore their bodies, to give them strength. And may they feel your presence providing the comfort, love, and peace they need from you. We pray for protection over our families and friends and all others that we hold so close to our hearts. And we ask for your hand to cover them with your love and protect them from evil. We pray for our military men and women to keep them safe and to protect them from harm. And we pray for peace among nations, families, and communities. Father, I'd just like to pause at this time and, and with silence, may others that are watching this uplift their concerns to you in prayer. Father, hear our prayers. With a grateful, open heart, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7, it reads, You must each make up your own mind as to how much you should give. Don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. No matter what the size of offering you are giving, please remember to give it from a faithful, cheerful heart. There is also an opportunity for you this week, if you're able to get up to the church, uh, you can bring your offering or your tithes to the office or to the safety box that's outside beside the double doors or online giving, whichever you prefer but also just give with a faithful, cheerful heart. Let us pray together our offertory prayer. May these gifts bring hope to those who are despairing, comfort to those who are grieving, nurture to those who are growing, and inspiration to those who are striving to answer Christ's call. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from John 10, 1 through 16. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is a shepherd of the sheep. 
the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enter, enters by me will be saved and will come and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, but does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I day lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This morning's sermon um, title is, Who is he? The good shepherd and gatekeeper, but who am I? In a book called I Shall Not Want, author Robert Kitchman tells of a Sunday school teacher who asked her group of children if anyone could quote the entire 23rd Psalm. A golden-haired, four-and-a-half-year-old girl was among those who raised their hands. A bit skeptical, the teacher asked if she could really quote the entire psalm. The girl did not answer her, but proceeded to the front of the room, faced the class, and bowed and said, The Lord is my shepherd. That's all I want. She bowed again and went back to her seat and sat down. This may be the greatest interpretation of the 23rd psalm ever heard, direct and to the point. In today's scripture reading from John, Jesus called himself the good shepherd and the gatekeeper. At first, the people did not understand, but Jesus was trying to provide them with an illustration of the good qualities that he has to be called the good shepherd and gatekeeper. If you really read the verse, verse again, you can really look deep into it and see these qualifications that he has to be called the good shepherd. First of all, he is good. Kalos, the Greek word, translate that which is noble, wholesome, and beautiful. Jesus is the only one who has or ever will live a sinless life. He kept and fulfilled the commandments perfectly. But those who call on the name of Jesus are forgiven and are seen by God as good. But it is only through Jesus that we can lay claim to this goodness. We are still works in progress, and we are still sinners and fighting daily against the evil of this world. But we know in our hearts who is fighting with us, the Good Shepherd. Because he is the only way to God the Father. Our second quality is he protects. At night, 
Sheep were often gathered into a sheepfold to protect them from thieves, weather, or wild animals. The sheepfolds were caves, sheds, or open areas surrounded by walls made of stone or branches. The shepherd often slept in the fold to protect the sheep. In the sheepfold, the shepherds functioned as a gate, letting the sheep in and protecting them. The sheep, I'm sorry, the shepherd also had a rod, which you could see in the picture, that was an instrument to protect both for himself and his sheep when there were danger arousing. Jesus is the gate to God's salvation for us. He offers access to safety and security. Christ is our protector. He guides. God guides you more than you think. I'm going to give you three examples. The Israelites. They traveled and camped as God, God guided them. When you follow God's guidance, you will know you are where God wants you, whether you're moving in one place or staying in one place. In the story of Ruth and Naomi, these women had a relationship where the greatest bond was faith in God. And even though Ruth may not have always recognized God's guidance, he had been with her every step of the way. When she went to glean or to collect the grain along the fields for her use for Naomi and herself, did it just happen that she ended up in the field owned by Boaz, who just happened to be a close relative? This was more than a mere coincidence. As you go about your daily tasks, God is working in your life in ways you may not even notice. My third illustration is a true story. My husband David and I were traveling, and we were going 81 north, heading towards Allentown, but somehow got distracted or just not thinking, and we went um, 83 on to 83 south. Um, along the way, not, not very short distance, on the other side of the road, there was two women with a flat tire. My husband decided to pull over, and you know how congested that those roads are right there. But I sat in the truck, and I prayed and prayed that he had, would be okay being protected and guided by the Lord, that traffic would slow down or no traffic at all coming, so David could get over to those ladies to change her tire. So, luckily, my prayers were answered right away. No cars were coming. David got across the road, got over the barrier, and helped these women with the flat tire. These two older women were going to church, and they didn't know what to do, and they were praying and praying, hoping for someone to stop by and help them. Their prayers were answered. David changed a tire. They wanted to... Um, give him something, David goes, no, put it in your offering plate. But, she, but David told them the story that they were, you know, David and I were supposed to go straight, but somehow we were off to the right to help them and answer their prayer. David got back to the vehicle, and again, no traffic, and got in the truck, and we were on our way, and then we did go back into the right road. But isn't it amazing? Was that a coincidence this happened? No. I know that they, um, David was happy about what had happened, and so were the ladies. And we must know that God sometimes directs us to a way that we don't always like. But it's always the best because he knows that we can help someone else. We must not cl close our hearts on what God can do. Events do not occur by luck or coincidence. We should have faith that God is directing our lives for this purpose and for his purpose. In Psalm 49, 14, it reads, He is our God forever and ever. 
and he will guide us until we die. Number four, he cares. Isaiah 40, verse 11 reads, He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are young. He is powerful, yet careful and gentle. In Psalm 23, he is called shepherd. In John 10, he is called the good shepherd. In Hebrews 13, he is called the great shepherd. In 1 Peter 5, he's called the head shepherd. He cares for each of us personally. No person or thing can be compared to God. He has a power and strength that will never diminish. His strength is our source of strength, and people need a shepherd that will care for them. He wants to provide us not only the physical food, but the spiritual strength that he provides to us through the Bible for us to grow stronger and wiser in our faith. Number five, he's a friend, a shepherd, who would lay down his life for his sheep. A thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus gives life. The life he gives is rich and full. It is eternal. Life in Christ is lived on a higher plane because of his overflowing forgiveness, love, and guidance. While a hired hand tends to sheep for money, the shepherd does it out of love. The shepherd owns the sheep and is committed to them. Jesus is not merely doing a job. He is committed to love us and even lay down his life for us. God showed his love for us by leaving heaven, entering humanity, living a perfect life, and paying the price for our sins by dying on the cross. He rose again, ascended to heaven to be with his Father, and intercedes on our behalf so that we can enter into a relationship with God. Jesus rescued us and laid down his life for us, his sheep. A reminder, my title was, Who is he? The good shepherd and the gatekeeper. But who am I? Each of you are a shepherd and you probably didn't even know it. And why am I saying that? Let's look again at what a friend is, as you can see on your screen. You have ears to listen. You have a mouth for advice, but usually sometimes it's just best to listen. You have a heart for caring. You have, you have an instinct to protect the, love, the ones that you love, even a friend. You want to give them guidance if they, af if they offer your advice, you can give them the guidance. You can care for them by giving them a hug, give them a box of tissues or chocolate chip cookies, a hand to hold, legs to stand by them or just whatever they need. You're there, a friend. Isn't that Jesus? Isn't that a shepherd? Goodness comes from our hearts, knowing that we have Jesus Christ in our hearts knowing that we need to protect those that we know and love, to provide to them the guidance that they need in their life because we care about them and we want them to know that they have a friend to rely on. Not only me, not only by you, but Jesus. So, I believe every one of us is a shepherd. And there's always someone out there that is, needs a shepherd to hear what you're saying, to be there for them. But do you know of anyone that really needs the good shepherd in their life? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your son, the good shepherd. 
Each day, may we read your word to have a better understanding of who your son is and how much he loves us and how much he wants us to be a part of his life. May we find the courage to trust our good shepherd, knowing that he has only our best interests at heart, understanding that he will never leave us nor forsake us, even when we pass through the dark valleys of life, because it is his tender care and direction that will lead us to green pastures and everlasting life with you. Amen. Let us uh, read together our closing benediction. And this is another form of the, the uh, 23rd Psalm that um, I had read many, many years ago and found it again. And I thought it was appropriate for our closing benediction. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in meadows green and leads me beside the quiet stream. He keeps on giving life to me and helps me to do what honors him the most. Even when walking through the dark valley of death, I will never be afraid, for he is close beside me, guarding, guiding all the way. He spreads a feast before me in the presence of my enemies. He welcomes me as his special guest with blessings overflowing. overflowing. His goodness and unfailing kindness shall be with me all of my life and afterwards, and I will live for him forever in his home. Amen. Blessings to you this week, and may you be safe through this weather as we return again someday to be together as one. Thank you. <laughs>